So what you're looking at is the warp that I showed last week or a few days ago, if you got to see it. I'm getting ready to put it on the loom. You can see it's all on the floor and the back. Uh, this is the front of the loom. And the loom I'm using today is my Delta loom. It's a loom made by Louette. It's a counter marsh loom. What I have, the yarn is going over the front beam and then it's going to the back. Now the method that I happen to use and I like is called back to front. So I'll pause here for a moment and kind of focus in a little bit. You see the Lee sticks there? They're, they are in the cross area. So if you're a weaver, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's a way to keep the threads separated. Now what I'm using, you see something purple there. I call those warping helpers. Years ago, there was a young woman at a convergence conference and she was selling these. She had a patent on them. I bought a set, not these. I bought another set from her. Try to look for them more recently. Could not find them anywhere because a lot of my weaver friends were saying, where did you get those things and how do they work? So I couldn't find them. I decided to start making some myself for some of my friends and uh, I call them warping helpers. I use, I'm using cotton uh, webbing to um, have the warp hang very, very nicely. You can see a little better view right here. And there's snaps, so it adjusts all different kinds of looms, because I this is only one of my five looms in my studio. So when I'm doing back to front, I have to use a rattle. I'm going to come over here and just point to the rattle. The rattle is this part here. Looks like a big comb. And these are set in half inch increments. So it helps to separate the, the yarn. And this is at a 15 inch width. It's for my uh, placemats that I'm going to weave. And I have it all set up. And rather than tying it to the back, I have a rod that's looped through the ends. So if you know how to make a warp, you should understand what I'm talking about. I did not cut that, I just looped them through. So right away there's gonna be less waste in my weaving. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to come over and I'm going to start to crank the handle there. And as I crank the handle, the warp is going to start to go th uh, through the, uh, the rattle and start to wrap around. Now there's some corrugated cardboard on the bottom and I'm going to put that, wrap it around to help keep it separate. So let me come out a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to start to wind here. I press and release the brake starts to wind on and then when I get to about that area here I'm going to let go and I come back to the other part of the loom the front part and I get a little tug and then next I'm going to step in front of the camera for a moment I'm going to take this cardboard I start with the corrugated and then I change to paper so this goes next, and I'm going to start to wind it on. You can see the least sticks are starting to come up. They're actually providing just enough weight to keep the yarn at a good tension. Some of you who have learned from other people might say, well, I don't think that's enough. That's not going to work. Well, I learned this years ago. Sorry about that. That was a beater and it works successfully for me. Just that little bit of weight on there. And what I will continue to do, I will continue to wind this on a little bit, and then I come back, and I will kind of give it a little tug, maybe do a little, I call it a little finger combing. That works too, in here. And then I will continue winding this on. And this take me a little time. I'm not sure how long. I think it's an 18 yard warp. So you have a little bit of an idea of behind the scenes on what I do to start to get the warp on the loom.